Big day. Justin Dunk joining us here from Three Down. What do you got, man? Were you pointing oh, at the screen? Your buddy, Troy, Sober Athletic Wear, says we'll call it the defibrillator. <laughs> That's good. I really <laughs> like that. that. And it's not bad. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> All right. Joining us from Three Dunk Nation, uh, Justin Dunk. And, Matt, have you stopped smiling, Justin, since the unanimous vote yesterday? And uh, happy days are here again? Honestly, it feels weird, Roddy. Like, to be talking about actual football after, what, over five or 600 days without it, it just doesn't feel quite normal yet. It doesn't, but I got over it fast, especially with Charleston Hughes sitting in here just dropping bombs. You see the quotes that he was dropping the last hour? Man, I love that guy. Straight fire. Let's get yeah. him the sack record, man. Give him whatever juice and energy he needs. I don't see any reason why he can't hit 27 sacks to become the CFL's all-time leader. What do you think? Me either, man. He's still going strong. At his age 27 for him, that could be one epic season or a couple mediocre ones for Charleston. Yeah, so the schedule came out today, and we've got fans from every team writing in here today. The Argos, I guess, play the Ticats four times. Fans of both teams are excited about that. The Lions are in here in week one. What struck you with the announcement of the schedule this morning? Anything stand out? Not really. I mean, we knew what week one was going to look like, Roddy. You had the Riders opening game against the BC Lions. To me, some of the intricacies that stand out, like let's say, for example, the Ottawa Red Blacks don't play the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Key storylines there with Matt Nichols, the quarterback who was kind of with Toronto, obviously in 2020, but never played for them. And then Paul Lapolis, the offensive coordinator, going to be the head coach there. So we won't have that storyline in 2021 but a lot of factors here obviously with COVID-19 the Red Blacks have a bit of a funky schedule where they have some midweek games a Tuesday game I believe in a couple Wednesday games but you got to do what you got to do to get football back on the field so at least we're talking about actual football. Hey JD how much are you hearing about roster sizes because that's you know we're talking to football guys and I was talking to a couple of guys uh, connected to the league yesterday and they're worried about injuries right guys haven't been in contact situations for you know a couple of years now it's it's starting to you know will that be a factor right more injuries will they increase practice roster sizes what are you hearing in that? Well, they're talking about initially how many guys are going to be able to bring to training camp, which I think will kind of get pared down to what you're talking about there, Dupe. So 100 was the initial number. I know there was some talk of cutting down to 75 because it could potentially save you some money in terms of the guys having to quarantine up here and the teams having to pay for that. So that's still being debated. It sounds like there's going to be expanded practice rosters and people are going to have to adjust and I mean football people they're ready list for maybe guys that are in Canada depending on what happens with the U.S. Canadian border what are the uh, hiccups the rest of the way I mean we know how the CFL operates it's not probably entirely different than a lot of other leagues because there was no handbook in the pandemic but I mean Charles just said he's like I don't know where training camp is right he just <laughs> there's a lot of loose ends here left after the vote yesterday so what needs to be tied up to get onto the field into training camp and then kick off August 5th first of all all those details you know need to get out to the players as it currently stands in the memo that we have up at Three Down Nation from Solomon Elamimi and the PA president is that all the players and you know coaches and the staffs are going to have to do a 7 day quarantine before they get to Canada, a seven-day quarantine when they arrive. Now, that might change because the CFL is trying to get the same NHL exemption that they had for the trade deadline. So potentially that gets truncated and smaller in size. But in terms of the details overall, it's going to be very much like NFL training camps. And the example I've been using is what we saw in Hard Knocks last year, where the players and coaches and personnel guys are going to convene for practices and they'll be on the field together. But outside of that, it's largely going to be Zoom meetings. So as far as what they need to figure out is all of these logistics, man, like I was saying for a while, there's no season until travel is being booked. So that travel right now is frantically being put together staffs are being rehired on the business side on the football operations side even medical staffs training staff so all those types of things are going on right now and the timeline is shrinking for it but hey at least we're talking about football it seems absolutely frantic how, co how couldn't it be right so many staff were laid off in all this and and i get it and i have faith that they're going to pull it off um there are a lot of people 
insiders still saying, I'll believe it when I see it kick off August 5th. Uh, And I'm still kind of that way. I'm trying to be positive. But for all the reasons you just outlined, it's not going to be easy. There's no doubt. Um, How confident are you that they pull it off August 5th? I'm fairly confident. I know the timeline is short. There's some people that are worried about that. But the CFL wouldn't come out and say, yes, we voted and are going ahead with it. And all of a sudden hit the pause button. It just wouldn't look good from a public relations standpoint. So my confidence is fairly high. I do think there are are a lot of things that are going to be done on the fly. But on the flip side of that, and to be fair to the league, they've been talking with the provincial governments for a long time, the local governments in each city, and even the federal government. So they have a rough idea of the framework that they're going to follow along. And I'll use the example of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. They had their summer series in Ontario and St. Catharines last summer. And I was down there, and it was very simple. They followed the protocol. So as much as people kind of get lost in the details a little bit, you just have to follow the protocols as an individual. And the event, I think, can end up going off without a hitch. Now, that was a little different because it was just a tournament and there wasn't necessarily travel among different cities. But it was very smooth there. No one was panicked. You know, they, of course, were cleaning the locker rooms, cleaning the courts there. So it'll be very similar in my mind to what goes on for the CFL to operate. Wayne in Victoria asks, are there going to be any preseason games? How's this going to look uh, when we nope. get going here? No preseason games. We'll have the training camp, obviously, starting July 10th and then leading into the kickoff on August 5th, which will be the Ticats and the Bombers in Winnipeg. And to be quite honest, Roddy, one of the things that insiders were talking about, and you sort of mentioned it off the top of dupes, is well, are we going to have a lot of injuries or is the football going to be sloppy? I'll point to the NFL in 2020, right? They didn't have any preseason games. They did their training camps, and they had the highest scoring season in NFL history. Now, some people might tell you that was due to sloppy tackling, but I think up here we're not going to complain if there's a bunch of points being scored. So I think the combination of the athletes having the extra time off to really seriously rehabilitate their bodies, feel fresh for maybe the first time ever, in their football careers, because you think of it, in a normal season, you end it in November. You know, most teams are obviously earlier in that month than later in the month, but still, you kind of have a couple months of recovery. Then you got to get back training, and you might not be able to get your body really, truly, fully healthy again. So the fact that this year off has helped these athletes recuperate past 100%, like Bully by Mitchell talked about, you know, working on different sides of his body and really evening everything out, which he hasn't had time to do in a normal season. So I think, to be quite honest, I'm going to go against the grain. We could see a high caliber of football, especially offensively, because these guys have been in their playbooks and still training at a high level. I was stunned at how efficient and crisp the NFL play was last year, beginning with week one, for all the reasons that you said. Very impressed. But they're pros. Probably shouldn't have been surprised. And I feel the CFL is no different. Viewers still uh, checking in with suggestions for the new rink, a nickname in Winnipeg, which has been renamed today the Canada Life Center. Chris in Toronto <laughs> says, the money pit. What do you think, dupes? I could get into it. From Tacona Powley. (laughs) Could you get into the rink? I could get into that. From Tacona Powley in Winnipeg, the CLC Center, Heartbeat House, the heartbeat of Canada. Not bad. Not bad. That's good. Not bad. Jen from the Four Seasons says, do we know how many fans are going to be allowed or at all? Saw the report on Sports Center uh, this morning saying that they don't have any approval for crowd sizes yet in any venue across the CFL. So what do you know about that, Justin? They don't, but if we go around the provinces real quickly, right? Jason Kenney expects the stadiums to be at full capacity in August when the season opens. The BC Lions are hoping for 5,000 fans for their first game at BC Place when that occurs. In Saskatchewan, you know the provincial government there and Scott Moe are going to want to get as many people as they safely can get in Mosaic Stadium for when the riders open up against the Lions. So I would imagine that will be a solid capacity. Winnipeg President Wade Miller has been kind of quiet in terms of not putting a number out there for what he expects for the opener. But I would imagine that we'll see some sort of fans there at IG Field. And then in Ontario, it's going to be largely based on how quickly we can get into step three. But because the East team, and specifically the ones in Ontario, their schedules are front-loaded with those West games. And I think by the time Labor Day gets here, 
believe it's Monday, September 6th, that we'll have a solid amount of fans in the stands in Ontario for the Ticats and Argos rivalry. Outstanding report, Justin. Uh, give a plug for Three Down, if you don't mind, to our viewers. You bet. Three Down Nation got all the goods there, Roddy. And I'll say one key thing in all of this, because the big thing to me, and I want to make sure I get this in there, in terms of the vote going from no in 2020 to yes in 2021, and there's been a lot of Argo bashing out there, so I feel like we got to even it out. Toronto President Bill Manning was involved with the Player Relations Committee. He wasn't in 2020. So I think the fact that one of the higher-ups with the Argos, one of the suits, we'll call them, was involved in that process with the players and really saw how it all played out, turned the tide there. So I just wanted to note that and get that little bit of news. I haven't put that out anywhere, so that's one just for you boys on the show. Outstanding stuff. I appreciate you coming on today, my man. We'll chat down the road. You bet, guys. Get ready for some football. Break out the rec laws. So, yeah, so nice to talk about it. Thanks, J.D. The CFL's number one insider, Justin Dunk from 3downnation.com, joining us from the Hammer. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 